Summer's over. A sentence that feels a bit melancholy. But at the same time, summer was here. With all different kinds of weather. Typical for Denmark. Been out for a jog. And after the first two kilometers, this happened. Life was lived more outside for a few months. I walked almost daily in the garden, taking stock of what flowers were now in bloom, rejoicing in the increasing daylight. In early June, there was a royal run through the streets of five cities in Denmark, finishing off with Copenhagen. It's royal because Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary and their four children take part. And it's become a huge nationwide event. I viewed it from the sofa, however, knitting being my main activity, followed by a trip into town. The city I live in, Ulnse, inaugurated a new tram, or light rail, which was seen as a big local event. It's an expansive time of year. It feels as if there's more room to move around in because of the warmer temperatures, and not least because of the light. The outside becomes part of your living room. A lot of people have started to lose a bit of weight around this time of the year, simply because it's easier and more pleasant to move around more outside. We'll put the weight back on during the winter, but in a way that's completely natural. It was the way our ancestors lived. On the 23rd of June, Danes celebrate Midsummer Eve, Sanctens, or the bonfires of St. John, and the tradition is to light a big bonfire, usually with a doll in the middle of it, resembling a witch. It was originally named after John the Baptist, whose birthday was supposedly the 24th of June. In the Nordic countries, it's celebrated the evening before, just like Christmas is celebrated on the 24th of December, the day before Jesus' birthday. But it gradually turned into more of a heathen celebration, held on, almost, the longest day of the year. It's a celebration of the light. The burning of the witch is meant to keep evil spirits away, although that tradition is being debated now. Today it's mostly a social event, big or small, where people come together, someone gives a small speech perhaps, and we sing the Midsummer Song. Summer is the time when I try to store up on nature and light and beauty to keep me going through the darker months. But when summer is actually here, I kind of forget about those months. This is the time of the roses. They only bloom for a few weeks, so I try to remember to go out and enjoy them as much as possible. Some of them bloom much earlier now than when I first planted them, likely due to rising temperatures and climate change. I mainly have historical roses and English roses, which to me are beautiful in an old-fashioned kind of way. Some of them were in Empress Josephine's garden, Napoleon's wife. I wanted to have them in my garden as well. And the peonies, they're just so abundant and lush that I marvel at their existence every summer. It was a big year for Danish cycling, and though I wouldn't call myself an enthusiast, it was difficult not to get carried away by the general enthusiasm throughout Denmark when this year's Tour de France began here. Tour de France is the biggest sporting event in cycling, with millions of viewers around the world. And Denmark has traditionally had many participants, and once, in 1996, even a winner. Thousands of people lined the streets around Denmark during those days, cheering the riders on, and the country was portrayed from both below and above. This church is actually where I got married, and where my oldest daughter was christened. Right next to it is the burial mounds of two ancient Danes, Gorm and Tura, 
and King Harold Bluetooth erected a huge runestone here, which is on UNESCO's World Heritage List. Bluetooth, incidentally, is named after the Danish Viking who was King of Denmark and Norway in the 10th century. Then we traveled to Croatia and came home just in time to see the Danish cyclist Jonas Vingegaard win the Tour de France, which put the whole country in a frenzy. Later we went hiking in the Alps and it seemed to me that July almost flew by. I did still go for walks in the area behind our house with our cat, who also loves this time of year, and in the garden because otherwise it feels as if summer flies by even faster in my part of the world. We had better enjoy it while it's here. Including light summer rains where we have to take cover under trees. During the summer vacation, I typically don't see many of my friends because many of us are away. Come August, we begin to socialize a bit more again. We went to a little cafe in town, which I simply had to show you because I love the decor. And the food is both delicious and organic. I immediately felt like redecorating after being there. New flowers were blooming in my neighborhood. And the first apples could be spotted on trees now. Going into town to celebrate my partner's birthday, meeting up with my oldest daughter and my youngest daughter is supposed to be here by now, but she's still getting ready. So I'm gonna cycle ahead. And right now I'm cycling out to my friend Meta's place because she turned 40 yesterday. Same day as my partner, who by the way turned 51. That's gonna be nice. We're gonna be 20 people and since I'm riding my bike, I can drink what I want. We're going to sit outside because it's 29 degrees Celsius right now. It's really hot. She lives in this little village on the outskirts of the city I live in. These are the kinds of summer evenings I cherish the most. Freedom on my bike. The sense that summer will never end. And it turned out to be a magical evening. The following weekend, I went on an excursion with my other friend called Mette and her family. Our destination was a small island called Ebelu, Apple Island, off the coast of the island of Funen that I live on. The water is so shallow between the two islands that you can walk there and back, although high tide might mean that the water hits your thighs. It's about a two mile walk in the sea and it was a very strange sensation. I didn't wear rubber bathing shoes like my friends because we continued walking on land. Instead an old pair of running shoes, which were heavy dragging through the water. 
so it was part slow cardio, part resistance training. My friend's partner does a lot of angling in his spare time and is a nature enthusiast, so he provided us with many anecdotes and knowledge of plants and wildlife along the way. This is a very old beech tree that looks entirely like an oak tree. There was a time when I would have felt slightly upset that my own family didn't want to come, but those days are past. I was just happy to go. I was actually more filled with gratitude that I have friends to go on a trip like this with at all. What wealth! We saw deer, or the antlers of deer, in the tall grass, had a lunch break, and walked through a more Jurassic part of the forest with huge ferns. <laughs> Mid and I made a brief pit stop there, in the middle of the ferns, and I stung my leg on a nettle. We stopped to look at some apples, for which the island is named, and went for a refreshing swim. The sea eats away at the land a little bit every year, as you can see here. Then began the walk back. By now it was high tide and the wind had picked up. By the time we were on dry land again, we had walked about 15 kilometers in all, or 9.5 miles, and were delightfully tired from all the fresh sea air. On my walks and bike rides now, it was clear that summer was beginning to give way to autumn. The giant hogweed had turned a brownish yellow. I biked out to Stia Ö close to me, just in time to pick the last blackberries. One late August evening, the low mist phenomenon known in Danish as Mosekunen Brygger, or the bog wife is brewing, was everywhere in the area behind my house. I don't know if there's an English phrase for it, but I love the mystical look of it. It seemed fitting for the coming autumn and reminded me that despite everything, I love the changing of the seasons. I lost track of time because the days were getting shorter now. By the time I was near my house again, it was clear that summer was coming to an end. <laughs> 